Today, lovelies. From Liverpool Lime Street and Manchester Piccadilly. Yeah, Saturday night, Piccadilly. <laughs> to the smaller stations, the railway is a lifeline for the north of England. Customer satisfaction, that's our destination. But the system is under pressure as never before. We've got a Leeds service cancelled, a Liverpool service cancelled, and a Piccadilly service cancelled. And staff are in the firing line. Move a bit more down for me, please, so I can get everyone on. Let me back get up! What's the worst thing in the habit? The punches. It's happened before, it'll happen again. I suck everyone from top to bottom is a complete waste of time. Now, cameras have been allowed behind the scenes. Oh. At the company that runs some of the busiest and most crowded trains in Britain, Trans Pennine Express. Guys, just stay there for me. Keep your head still. It's not sponsored. Filmed during a make or break year. We are expanding our fleet by over 60%. For Trans Pennine, this is the biggest thing we've ever done. It's gonna go right, it's got to. <laughs> Has to. This is the inside story of what it really takes to run a railway. Just with the weather, then nothing at all is moving out of Piccadilly. I can confirm the two children are on the tracks at the minute. And get the North back on track. We'll deliver for the North. This time. Well, they're all fighting here now. Guys! It's all kicking off across the network. It's quite scary how quick things can change. And a bomb alert brings the service to a halt. The passengers were concerned. Uh, they felt that the gentleman was a bit suspect. With nearly two billion journeys every year, more of us are using the trains than ever before. Late for work again. Another happy customer. <laughs> and for staff across the entire network, growing numbers of passengers bring ever greater challenges. <laughs> Manchester Piccadilly. With 30 million commuters coming through here every year, staff are always on the lookout for the troublemakers. Today, British Transport Police Officer George Griffin has been tipped off about a problem. Oh, yeah, that guy walking down there, just coming through the back, yeah, it's a bit of a no ticket. Right. A station worker has spotted a man who slipped through the barriers and sneaked onto a platform. So George and his colleague head over to investigate. What's your description? I need a good description then, I can't. Well, it's not that, like, hugging ship going up the staircase now. You all right? You can't see the barrier without a ticket, buddy. Yeah. Have you, have you got, have you, have you got a train ticket? No, oh, mate, I got a return ticket yesterday, yeah. Got the thing here. Right, right. we're going to help you. Yeah. We're going to get some cooperation. We're going to lower you down a peg. But let's work out what's going on. It's like right. you're trying to, it's like no, you're doing it on purpose to me, though. It's like you want, I like, some sort of scene. Do you want to just... Can I have your, your name and, and, and date of birth to start oh. with? After some initial reluctance, the man hands over his details. Please, I get a PNC check, uh, Manchester Piccadilly, uh, call number 3994, it's just a stop check. George requests a check on the man's address. Yeah, that's all I see, thanks, Joe. But the address the man's given doesn't match his details on the system. Right, have you got um, another address or have you recently lived at another address? What address do you need to know? The man gives a second address. Right. Okay. Up front honesty now, OK? Right, who's at this address? My girlfriend's there, innit? So, right, what we'll do is take you back there, but we need to get to the bottom of it. Essentially, you can't get on a train without a ticket, OK? The man was escorted from the station. George and his colleagues drove him to the address given where they verified his identity and issued a warning against fare evading in the future. It might seem minor, but at the end of the day, it's no different to stealing. He's gone out of his way to avoid paying for a ticket and avoid the revenue staff. 
On the front line of dealing with difficult passengers is conductor Ian Winston. Tonight he's manning a notorious service, the 634 from Manchester to Huddersfield. And he's likely to have his hands full. Yeah, he's getting that time of night now, he's going to get uh, a bit more rowdy, as we'll see. The line is well known for alcohol fueled antics. It's a popular pub crawl route for stag do's and fancy dress. 5% As conductor, Ian has to keep all his passengers safe. Even the well oiled ones. Oh, they're all fighting here now. Guys! If it, if it was an express train going through and he was on the floor, you've got no chance of stopping one of these. Guys! Ian holds the train. And luckily an elf is on hand to break up the fight. I've just seen a little elf break a fight up. That's one to tell my grandkids, I think. Back on board, the pub crawlers continue to enjoy themselves. But Ian has increasing concerns for his other passengers. This is what we've got to watch out for, is safety, especially with young families. Because they don't, they don't want to hear <laughs> swear words or shouting and bawling this time of night. So we're just going to try and keep an eye on it and make sure everyone gets from A to B safely. What are they up to? Just being loud. Yeah. Ian steps in to escort other travellers to a quieter carriage. OK, there's plenty of seats just past them people there. I'm outnumbered, about 15 to 1. Um, I'd rather remove her from the equation and get into a place of safety where she feels comfortable. You all right? Yeah? When the revellers make one final stop for last orders, peace returns to the train. Is everyone all right? You all survived? <laughs> he was very concerned about our safety, sitting down, because he knew we weren't the drinkers. Ian can breathe a sigh of relief. End of shift. We survived it. I'm homeward bound. Thank goodness. And maybe look forward to a well-deserved nightcap of his own when he gets home. It might be the end of the evening for Ian, but the night is still young in Manchester. Attempting to keep passengers in line are the 24 British Transport Police officers on the lookout for trouble at the city centre's four train stations. Tonight, officers Tom Wright and Chris Neely are in the fast reaction response car moving from station to station. I love a good sleep. I sleep better on nights. I can go like an 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. sleep and don't not wake up once. Just driving through Levenshume. Chris and Tom have received a report of a fight breaking out on the concourse at Piccadilly involving a number of men. As soon as they arrive, they're approached by a man who claims he's been threatened by a group of lads. Well, that guy's trying to bang me over there, bro. Which Three one? of them. Just went over here with me, mate. What's happened? Who's actually giving me shit to you, bro? Fella. You giving me shit, bro? Who, the staff or these chunks? Him and what? him. I'll speak to him, I just need to know what's going on. Bro, he's that's here, lads. Have a quick chat with you there. Yeah, no worries, bro. What's just happened to him? Just happened outside. He's a bad guy. Punched in the mouth. Listen, no, no. calm yourself down. Always. Calm yourself down. No, mate, just take he, him away. He needs to calm down. Off. Right, take him away. Okay. He needs to calm down. Yeah, just tell so, me to you what happened. Basically, yeah, we walked through through the doors. He's asking us for change. Yeah. No, mate, we've had enough of people asking us for change. Oh, I'll do this, I'll do that. Where are you going back to now? Stoke. Right, where's the train? Lads! The Stoke passengers make a final lunge at the man. 
Do you want to travel? No, I'll be traveling, Where are you traveling mate? to? I'll travel. No, you won't be. Not with to. attitude like that, Bob. Not with attitude yeah, like that. Lads! No worries, bro. Yeah. Lads! Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to calm him down yeah, right now, yeah, otherwise yeah. we'll be getting yeah, the bad. Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, we'll get He's got enough getting yeah. the Come on, watch it, watch it. Lads, you have to understand yeah, there's seven of you. There's yeah, one of you. Let's go. We can't be having behaviour like that. As the group of lads are sent off to get their train, Tom and Chris check on the local man. Where are you trying to get to? I'm trying to get home with you, bro. Right, do you just want to get home, dude? Just run round there, innit, bro? And run back in there, bro, and you're trying to tell his mates to boot me, bro. Listen, they're yeah, men. They just ran straight to you, innit, bro? They just had, to you and told listen, They've just had too much to drink, all right? Why don't you stay out here for a bit, just get a bit of yeah, fresh yeah, air? I know, I know it's wound you up. They've gone, they've got on a train to Stoke. You stamp me, yeah, bro. No, Brad. I promise you that's, that won't happen. Come on, just bring yourself down a little bit. 20 minutes, get a smoke, yeah, chill yourself out. Yes, me heart, bro. And you've got a train at yes, 10 o'clock. Tom and Chris have diffused the incident. But all over the network, antisocial behaviour is up, with violent crime rising 16% last year. So now, TransPennine have introduced a squad of security ambassadors to deal with the worst offenders across the north. On the east coast of Lincolnshire, Becky Woodhead is preparing for the arrival of a train full of hundreds of rowdy football fans at Cleethorpe Station. It's about 300 on the next one, isn't there? 300. There's going fans coming through now. Yeah. Becky's working with Humberside Police today to keep apart the supporters of bitter rivals Grimsby and Scunthorpe ahead of their local derby. I can put some red barriers across here and you've, we've got presence in front of them. They're going to know not that it's a dead end, aren't they? Do you want me to? No worries. Local lass Becky is a former nightclub bouncer but has been on patrol at Cleethorpe's for the past 18 months. Something better than nothing. I've seen a few people on here that I went to school with and they're like, Christ, be doing something like this. You've got some balls. <laughs> but I don't think I could be stuck up in, a, in an office job. I'd be crawling the walls. I need to be out there with the public. It's what I, I think it's what I'm built for. For Becky, railway security has been even more eventful than working the doors. I've had two attempted suicides. I've had physical alterations. But it is rewarding. There's a lot of things that you do that make those grim days worth coming back. With Grimsby Town Stadium on the outskirts of Cleethorpes, both home and away fans are due to arrive at the station. All right, guys. And the station is a potential battleground. <laughs> the Grimsby fans arrive first. But with the 10.53 from Scunthorpe due any minute, the home fans have remained at the station to confront their local rivals. They'll be coming in on the train as the last stop and walking down to the, the football ground. That's why there's a heavy presence here at the minute, because this is where they'll be getting off. As the Scunthorpe train pulls in, Becky has to be on high alert. There have been clashes before previous derby games, and as the rival fans face each other, there could be another flare-up. If it kicks off, if I can assist the police to push the fans back, then that's exactly what I'll do. But it's quite scary how quick things can change, and how people can change. Coming up... There's been a bag left in the tank. Let's have a look. Conductor Mandy faces a security alert. Just have a bag that's left, and I do want to make sure that everything's OK. If you don't mind, just move them further into the next carriage. At Cleethorpe Station, security ambassador Becky Woodhead has put herself in harm's way to try and prevent clashes between rival football fans. <laughs> As more and more Scunthorpe fans stream off the train, Groomsby Town supporters have gathered to bait them. As the situation escalates, Becky steps in to escort other passengers safely out of the station. You all right, guys? Sorry about that. You all right? <laughs> Becky
Becky and the police managed to usher the rival fans away from the station in opposite directions. There might be some stragglers, but as you can see, that was the main bulk of it. So, hopefully that was it. With the fans safely cleared from the station, Becky has faced her last football crowd. She's leaving the security team to take up a new role in revenue protection. I'm very excited for my new position, yeah, I am. I'll be sad to leave this and the guys at the station, but I'm looking forward to the new adventure I've got. But it could be out of the frying pan and into the fire, as Becky will be tackling the most challenging passengers on the network, fare dodgers. 50-year-old Geordie Mark Lloyd is a seasoned member of the team. Today, he's working the rush hour train between Newcastle and Durham. Morning. Is this first class or normal? This is indeed first class. I think we'll go the other way then. Oh, we're all first class here. He spent half his life on the railways and is only too aware of the risks that come with the job. Couldn't trouble you for your rail card, could I? Yeah, wonderful, but thank you. Cheers. I want to trundle down the train being happy and smiley and stamping everybody's tickets and having a crack on it. But it's not all wine and chocolates. This job isn't like that, you know, and it's very much at the very sharpest of the sharp end. Revenue protection staff get assaulted more than any other railway staff. There's a reason for that. If you're taking money off people, if you're reporting them, if you're doing this, that and the other, you are much more likely to be assaulted. I've been punched, I've been kicked, I've been spat at, which is the worst. Multiple verbal assaults. I mean, I've literally had someone say to me, I hope your kids get cancer and die, all because I charged them the full price. Can I take your ticket there, mate? Just tell us, where did you get on? Right, so you did get on a dollar. Right, and you need a ticket. Yeah. Mate, I will trip you up every time, OK? Just buy a ticket. But Mark has little in the way of punishment when he catches a fare evader. At the moment, they get on board the train and the only penalty going is, we'll just charge you a standard fare. But people, again, are taking the chance. So really, I think if we don't do something, I think it will get worse. But that's all about to change. The countdown is underway to a new penalty fare system, coming into force in just two weeks. The penalty fare notice is going to be you board the train without a ticket. You either get charged a penalty fare of 20 quid or twice the price of the journey that you're making. So it could get expensive, put it that way. Thanks, man. That's lovely, guy, thanks. While Mark's hoping the new system will deter fair dodgers, he knows it could lead to more confrontations. I think we'll be hard-pressed. I think we'll, we'll find it difficult to do at first. Because it's not going to go down very well, I can guarantee you that. Any more unseen tickets, then, please? Across the network, one and a half million train journeys are made each year by passengers travelling without a ticket. For Trans Pennines commercial director Darren Higgins, the fight back against fare dodgers is long overdue. It's a big issue. We estimate here at Trans Pennine Express it could be costing us between five and ten million pounds a year. And people who don't or choose not to buy tickets are effectively pushing the cost up for those who, who do buy tickets. So it's unfair, it's unjust, uh, and it's something that we absolutely want to crack down on. It's 7 a.m. With the new penalty system set to come in soon, one of Trans Pennine's toughest enforcers is being unleashed to provide a warning to fare dodgers. Yeah, mate, can you get your train to this place? The uncompromising Lukash Sambear is leading a sting operation at Lancaster Station. Train to get this, guys, thank you. It's one of the worst hotspots for ticket evasion, known to staff as Fair Dodgerland. Lancaster Station, as you see, there's no physically ticket barriers here. As if you know that you can leave the station without paying. It's temptation, people will try it. Train tickets made, please. Passengers should buy before they travel. We got your train tickets, sir. Nobody approached me for a ticket, I haven't got a ticket. And Lukash's former career in Poland has prepared him for anyone who takes umbrage. I used to work prison officers, so get used to dealing with the difficult customers, I would say. <laughs> Where drove hey, from? It takes longer. You came from Morecambe, that's the only And Morecambe have a booking office open? Of course not. Did you try maybe pay in advance on the website or use no, the I app? Only, I only, I've not been on this train once it's, a year. It, it at literally the most. takes two minutes and, you, you, and you're free to go, okay? It's an absolute disgrace. 
I just ask you to pay for a journey. Stay in takes two minutes and that's it. Paying. It's just a disgraceful service. Nobody came for my ticket. I'm quite happy to pay. I don't mind paying on the train. I don't like queuing up like this. Lukash has heard every excuse under the sun. What is the reason that you didn't pay before you board? Because I was in a hurry. The train was That's fine. That's train. why. That's why we have to report it because it's by before board policy. You try to use the train line app or you can do it online. I can't fit it, fit it on my phone. There's trouble with my phone. My phone doesn't work. Uh, I was in the rush. That's quite a common excuse here. Yeah. No excuse, I would say. Yeah. We have to be consistent with that. Not all those without a ticket are prepared to go quietly. Yeah, Lukash is forced to step in. I've offered to pay for my ticket, you just bring the shilly. No. It's a quite, quite challenging job as a frontline staff because a lot of confrontations. Have you got his address? Language. It's easy to say, don't take it personally because he's, he's had verbal abuse three times a day. You're free, you're free to go now, mate. Lukash has taken the man's details. All tickets and passes, please, guys. Your train tickets, please, guys. And for now, he'll receive a warning through the post. Thank you. Cheers. But in a fortnight, Lukash will be able to hit fair dodgers harder with the new on-the-spot penalties. Across the Pennines in West Yorkshire... Morning! Conductor Mandy Spencer is welcoming passengers aboard the Huddersfield to Manchester service. Where are you going to? Even out here, Mandy never knows what problems passengers could bring. Hello, is this a naughty table? <laughs> <laughs> I know your sort. Mandy has been manning this line for three years, shuttling back and forth across the Pennines eight times a day. But she's not always had the best of luck. At the depot, I'm called the Jinx. They just feel things go wrong when I'm on the train. Uh, for example, we had a bit of a fire underneath the train and there was a massive bird that just flew into the driver's windscreen and smashed the windscreen. So um, some drivers normally check to see who the conductor regard is for that day and they do have a bit of a panic on when it's Monday. There is a little bit of disruption, as you may have gathered this morning, so... <laughs> but we'll get you there. 20 minutes into the journey, it appears the jinx has struck again. There's been a bag left in the tank on the train. Oh, on, um, on this one? I'll just come down with you and have a look. Thank you for that. Let me have a look. Passengers are concerned about a suspicious black rucksack. Has he just got off now? Yeah. So, as far as you're aware, the gentleman was aware that he'd left the bag. Because he looked around, he was talking to himself, half a girl, and then he just left. We just ask everyone if they don't mind moving out of the area. We just have we just have a bag that's left, and I do want to make sure that everything's OK. If you don't mind just moving further into the next carriage. With over 100 passengers travelling with her today, Mandy is taking no chances. Just take your time. Just move into the next carriage, if you don't mind. As the train is between stations, all she can do is clear the carriage and report to network control that there could be a bomb on board. Coming up... OK, lift in. To keep the service running, the maintenance team need to hoist a 150-ton train 15 feet into the air. Don't like it, does it? Is everybody OK? Conductor Mandy is travelling through the West Yorkshire countryside with a suspect package on board her service. The abandoned black rucksack is serious enough for Mandy to raise the alarm with network control. Good evening, Control Gavin speaking. Where staff like Relief Incident Controller Gavin McLean deal with any potential threat. Our staff, they're very good at reporting any suspect packages. They're also well trained and they understand uh, the process they need to follow. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be a couple of minutes here at Marsden as the bag's been left on board. I just wish to get it checked out before we proceed our journey. Thank you for your patience. 
Has the bag been left and it was it, it's in rather suspect circumstances? But no problem, I'll let the signal. Let the signal know and I'll give a call. With the driver up to speed, Mandy calls to update the control room. Hi, control, it's Amanda Spencer. The train is held on the platform, but it's blocking the line, so other trains that need to pass through are rerouted. But Mandy's still concerned. Police, please. We have a bag that was left deliberately unattended. The passengers were concerned. Uh, they felt that the gentleman was a bit um, suspect and aware that he had left the bag and just rushed off at the last minute. It's a, it's a backpack rucksack. Are we OK now moving the train from the platform? They have sent us someone to pick the bag up and we can now depart and leave the station free. Right. Let me know when we can go. Yeah, no. Thank you. Mandy's train gets the all clear to leave the station. Leaving the backpack on the platform, awaiting the police's arrival. Unavoidable disruptions like security alerts quickly lead to delays and cancellations. To prevent further problems, the maintenance team try to keep trains in perfect working order here at the Ardwick depot. Today, technicians Carl Moriarty and Steve Brundrett need to change an entire bogey, the structure that connects the wheels to a carriage. Carl knows it's a massive operation, requiring a 12-strong group of engineers to lift an entire three-car train into the air. It's a big job. Everyone's got to concentrate on what they're doing. Every job in here is dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. As you can imagine, if you're lifting 150 ton, uh, about 15 foot up in the air, you know, everything has to be right. Once a train has covered 140,000 miles, its well-worn wheels must be swapped for a fresh set. Right, I've got that one, yeah. Can you get the other end? Carl and Steve begin by disconnecting the bogies so that when the entire train is lifted up, they remain on the tracks. For this Herculean task, 12 sturdy piston jacks will be connected to the train to hoist it into the air. We've got to watch the jacks because if a couple of jacks stop working, the rest of the jacks are operating and, and we get the coaches being lifted out of level, which can cause uh, catastrophic damage, really. With the bogies disconnected from the carriage, Steve gathers the team to lay out the plan. I want an individual on each jack, and you're just checking the operation of the jack. Now, the thing is, if you've got any doubts about anything, shout, stop. With the dozen technicians in place, the operation can begin. OK, lifting. Under the colossal weight, the jacks begin to strain. You all right there, Jack? I not like it, does it? But they're just strong enough to carry the load. As the train begins to rise up, there's a danger that it could snag, causing huge damage to the bogies. That's the location now, that locates into the train, that puts the, the bogey in the right position, so it has come, it's come apart. Is everybody OK? OK. The operation has been a success, and the train has been safely lifted away from the wheels. But for the next stage, the team will need to carefully manoeuvre the five-ton bogies into the workshop. Back at Marsden Station, the police have arrived to inspect the suspicious black rucksack. Once the police know what they're dealing with, they'll tell the control room whether the line can reopen. If it's in a station, then they might seek to evacuate the station. 
So we follow their instructions. They decide how long they need that line shut for and until such time as they say, we just have to manage the situation as best we can. You're putting people's lives at risk, risk otherwise. After investigating, the police have decided it's a false alarm. Trains can continue through the station as normal and the black backpack is removed. You can't mess around with something like that and you can't get angry. If a, if a security alert is called, regardless of why it was called, much better that than something not being reported um, leads to some of the horrible instances that we've, uh, that we've had to deal with as a, as a nation. Twenty miles away in Ardwick, Carl and Steve are preparing for phase two of the bogey switchover. These bogies weigh uh, five ton. When you're rolling the bogies down, you, you've got to be 100% that it's not going to catch anything. Because the last thing you want is to be rolling these bogies out and it and it hits something. The bogies are clear of the train. They can now be lowered onto a hydraulic lift and shunted across to the maintenance area. OK. Then they're attached to a crane and lifted into the workshop where they'll be serviced. How's that looking? Good. With the old bogies safely into the workshop, the final stage of the operation can begin. The team need to roll a replacement bogey under the 150-ton train and delicately lower the carriage. Just line it up there. Right, go on, push it. Please. <laughs> Please. If the bogey isn't perfectly aligned with the carriage, it could become twisted. We're going to lower the whole train down and then just as we get about an inch from the location, we juggle it about just so that it locates in these locating holes. Then we'll just take the weight off the jacks on the train. OK, rolling. During this critical phase, precision is crucial. Hold it there, brother. Right, do you look all right there? Right, run it down. The carriage and the bogey are aligned and Carl can give the go-ahead for the carriage to be dropped into place. Right, hold it there. Right, all the weight of the train now is down on the bogey. OK, lads, thank you. Everything's in a safe position now. So, happy days all round. It's 8am at Middlesbrough Station. God, it's not nice. With the new on-the-spot penalty policy starting in just two days' time, Revenue Protection Officer Mark Lloyd is braving the bitter northeast chill to deliver a final warning to anyone hitching a free ride. Hey, check it all tickets, rail cards, please, thank you. We'll have a, probably a few moans, a few grumbles, but we, we've just got to get the message across. This is all about educating people, it really is. That's expired, that one, buddy. We'll have to have a chat about your real journey, my friend, OK? Mark has stopped a man travelling on an out-of-date ticket. Were you aware that your season ticket was expired? Uh, no, mate. No. Um, I'll be honest, I thought I had a couple more days on OK. It, so... Today, he's only charged the standard fare, but he won't mm. be so lucky in 48 hours' time. Obviously, you need to buy before you board if there is a ticket machine available, cos they're going down the penalty fares path. Some people bury their heads in the sand and kind of like hope it goes away. Sadly, it won't. The man leaves with Mark's warning ringing in his ears. As of Monday, that's it, it's hammered down. We've done everything in our power. We've handed out cards, we've got announcements on trains, we've produced a, a large amount of literature, we've put signage at stations. We've done everything that we can in our power. Over to you guys. Come Monday morning, the fight against fair dodgers will begin. The big day has finally come for Trans Pennine's revenue protection team. 
After weeks of warning commuters about the new penalty system, today is D-Day across the entire network. Anyone caught travelling without a valid ticket will be hit with an on-the-spot fine of £20, or twice the price of their journey, whichever is more. The team have spread out across the north of England to cover trains, station platforms and ticket barriers in order to capture fair dodgers. There you go. Trains coming now. Hopefully all the customers will have a valid ticket. <laughs> Braced and ready for action in Lancaster is former prison officer Lukash. Yeah. Is there any reason that you didn't fail no, for the prize? I was on last minute to get the ticket. So I had to use a uh, pay so on the trip before. It's like a buy before the board policy. You have to oblige to pay before travel. A man has arrived from Preston without a ticket and claims the ticket office was closed. Did you go to the ticket office? Yeah. What you happened? Get one. Oh, you couldn't get one? Was it close? Or? Yeah, close. Yeah. Was close? Booking yes, office? Yeah. Preston? Yeah. But Lukash's intel says otherwise. It's actually open. No. We found them, I saw open. Mm -hmm. The man will not escape a fine. We have to actually show that it's not free travel with us. On the 10.03 service from Scunthorpe, it's a baptism of fire for new girl Becky. Where did you get on? Scunthorpe. It's a penalty fair, unfortunately. I do believe we are going to get a lot of upset customers, but it's been advertised since November, so they've got to come into force. Ready to intercept fair evaders at Huddersfield is Mark. Get yourself through there, guys. Yes, thank you. It's not going to be easy, but nobody ever said life was going to be easy now, did they? You know, you just have to get on with it and see what happens. And catching Mark's BDI is a man who's arrived without a ticket. Should just quickly bought one in line. Uh, it's your best bet, it really is. So, I, quite frankly, I don't really have to waste time with you. I could just buy one online right now. I won't accept it. Well, you're not really accepting it. It's the machine, is it? I'll still issue you with a penalty fare regardless. That, that will happen. There is going to be a penalty fare here. While Mark's filling out the penalty form, the man hastily buys a ticket on his phone and slips through the barriers. Where's he gone? Do you like this? I'll just issue it anyway. Mark has his details, so he'll still receive a fine for making the journey without a ticket. Number one, not only hung around for it. As far as I'm concerned, the penalty fare still stands. There we go, that's that done. Becky may be the rookie of the team, but she's not holding back on the new zero tolerance approach. There's penalty fares in place at the minute, so there's going to be a penalty fare for yourself. It's, it's because I'm late. Are you well late? I know. The thing is, we've been advertising it since November. Hearing that she's about to get a fine, the passenger turns on the waterworks. <laughs> your mum, your mother, your mother. Listen, please, I know that you're stressed, but we need to resolve this now, OK? So how much would that be? So it'd be £42.60. Are you paying cash for the fare? Are you paying it all together? As awful as it sounds, I think the lady genuinely got upset at first, but then I do, I do think that a lot of it was played on to get out of it. Because as soon as I said to her, these are your options, she stopped crying instantly and pulled out money. Right, there we go. So there's your ticket from Meadowhall to Manchester, and then there's your penalty fare, OK? And of course, you know, you have to be compassionate, but at the end of the day, it's my job and you've still got to do your duties. Unsurprisingly, the new penalty system isn't going down too well with some of those caught travelling without a ticket. Can I just get out of it, please? No, as soon as you give the details to my yes. colleague, yes. Can I have my ticket, pay the money and get out? I would rather walk than give you another penny of my hard-earned money. Scum! Get out, please. That is just ridiculous, that is. I want nothing to do with it. There you go, buddy. What service you run? Gentleman wasn't overjoyed with the idea of paying £20 for a journey from Dewsbury to Huddersfield, and nor should he be. It's only £3.80, but penalty fares are in operation. For the revenue protection team, the launch of the new penalty policy is already having a big impact. At least 45 people have been reported at not having tickets, which is, I would say, a lot. You won't be able to completely reduce tickets travel to zero 
but if we're able to reduce ticket to travel for a few percent, that would be great. At Manchester Piccadilly, the new penalty system is in full effect across the station's 39 ticket barriers. The police told me they were asked out to deal with an unattended wear bag on a, on, a, on a platform. No, it was actually unattended on the train, then removed from the train and my, put on the I platform. I lost my bag on the train. It caused panic within passengers, so we had to follow a procedure. No, I'm not. The normal I procedure is to take left luggage to... Not if it's considered to be a threat. I, th I find this story increasingly yeah. bizarre. Unfortunately, it's just, it happens everywhere. Bags do get left. As far as I'm concerned, you chose to dump my bag with valuables on the station. It did scare some passengers and it I did cause delays, um, but we have to no. deal with it. It's safety first every time. We can't take anything for granted. The man is unsatisfied with Mandy's explanation and takes her details so he can make a formal complaint. I would have thought people would be a bit more understanding. We do ask people to make sure they keep their baggage and luggage with them. We do ask them if they see anything to report it. And if our passengers are scared, it's my job to investigate it and take the best possible course of action. It turned out it wasn't what was suspected, which is good, but it could quite easily have been a different story. It's not personal, it's I'm out doing my job and as I know, if I'm doing as best a job I can to keep my passengers safe, I'll take it every time. Next time. Graffiti artists have decided to attack a few of our units. The battle against trespassers. The police are chasing someone from the north end of the station. There we are, guys! Three children are on the tracks as the train's approaching in the up direction. Nobody wants to get the call to say someone's been hit by a train. Right. You can see that next Wednesday at 9. Tomorrow at 9, Dan Jones explores the waterway that made Liverpool the world's busiest port in building Britain's great canals, a transport revolution. Next, a conflict that's been raging for nearly a century and all over you, the consumer. Supermarket Wars Battle of the High Street is next. <laughs>